G'day YouTubers, uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Today we're going to talk about some cutting angles and how it can affect the type of saw that you've got. Uh, so this type of saw that you see in front of you is an MS380, it's about 17 years old. It's 72 cc's, so uh, it's got a 20 inch bar on it. So it can uh, get through a decent size uh, log without any problems. You could use a full chisel chain on it, or you could use a semi-chisel chain. So we're going to talk about different angles. So for those that are not 100% familiar with a full chisel, full chisel chain roughly looks at like that. You'll see it comes to a nice sharp point. When we talk about the top plate angle, most chains that you will buy will have a 30 degree top uh, plate angle. The top plate cutting angle is the angle that either the file comes in or the grinding wheel comes in. This is known as the side plate. Side plate angle uh, refers to uh, this angle that's coming into the side plate. For those that are on a square grind, it's much easier. Uh, the, it's even more easier if you get a hexa cut because this angle is defined by a straight line rather than a line that has a curvature on it that changes a lot because if we were to look at this angle here, you could say that this... This is uh, 90 degrees because uh, it's virtually just straight up and down, whereas over here it's on a different angle. So as we move around the radius of the tooth of the side plate, the angles change. So it can get a little bit confusing when we're talking about the side plate. But when we're on a uh, square ground uh, tooth, which is uh, a little bit different, uh, the side plate angles are a little bit easy to uh, understand what's going on. But what I'd like to talk about is that when we talk about uh, whether you, you'll see people talk about, oh, you could use a 25 degree top plate angle uh, on that or a 30 degree or a 35. So first of all, if we talk about the top plate angle, uh, where, where would you use a 35 degree top plate angle? Well, normally in softer timber. So it depends where you live what timber you're cutting as to what angle you would most likely use all the time. So here, I live in Australia and we've got eucalypts and they are amongst some of the hardest wood in the world. So normally we never use a top plate angle of 35 degrees. You could, but you're wasting your time. Uh, either use 25 or 30. Now, the other thing is when we're talking about changing the angles or when we're talking about using it, uh, a semi chisel chain or a full chisel chain we talk about cutting speed so when we change different chains or angles the scud the cutting speed can vary so if a 25 degree uh, top plate angle roughly just say it's 92 percent cutting uh, speed efficiency and a 30 degree uh, top plate angle could be a hundred percent efficiency uh, in speed and you might find out that they've got different torque ratings, whereas a 30 degree could be 80%, uh, requires 80% torque, and a 25 degree requires 98% uh, torque. So if we're to use a 30 degree top plate angle, it's mainly used in medium to hardwood, and a 25 degree angle is mainly used in hardwood. So most of the chains that are sold here in Australia are 30 degrees. So that's medium to hardwood. Now that's going to require 100, that'll give you 100% cutting speed and you'll use about 80% torque. So long as the, the chain is very sharp, it'll cut through the timber very good. So, okay, then we talk about the top plate cutting angle. So the top plate ang cutting angle is the angle that either the file is leaving the leading edge on. So we just grab that tooth again, I could show you that. So when we talk about a, a 60 degree angle, it's this angle here, either the file leaves this 60 degree angle or the, or the actual grinder leaves this 60 degree angle. So as you play around with those angles a little bit, with a, with a grinder you can, with a file it's a little bit more difficult. But generally speaking, the more aggressive that you have the angles, the more horsepower you need out of your chainsaw. So, you know, you'll see people on some of the forums say, oh, can I use this? Can I do that? So a full chisel chain roughly is about 10% more aggressive than a semi-chisel. So if you start to make 
uh, change the top plate to say 35 degrees, it's even going to want more horsepower in harder timber. So it's you've got to try and balance these angles out. So if you were to stick in really hard timber, really hard timber, you stick to 25 degrees. In medium to hard, you can have 30 degrees. So it depends on the type of saw that you've got. Now, there's no good putting a 25-inch bar on here and think that you're going to cut hardwood. Ain't going to happen. Yeah, the saw's going to bog down. Now, the other thing that sort of play comes into play here is when we're talking about the depth gauges or raker gauges, as some people like to call them. Now, normally, your raker would sit at 0.65 of a millimetre. You can set them at 0.75 without any problem. Uh, if you do set them at 0.75 and you do set your top plate angle at 35 degrees and you've got soft timber, won't be a problem. You'll be able to cut through that quite good. But if you've got really hard timber, then you need to keep those depth gauges at 0.65 of a millimetre. Don't go any deeper unless it's softer timber. So softer timber, you can go a little bit more aggressive. If you're using a full chisel chain, which is, that's my number one preference, always full chisel, uh, because it's more aggressive. So the more aggressive that I can have a chain, uh, the better, as long as I keep it razor sharp. And that's the main thing to a lot of this, keeping it razor sharp. So the most important thing is this top plate angle, this leading edge here is razor sharp. And the side plate all the way down to the gullet is razor sharp so that when it bites into the timber, it hits it hard. And as I said before, if you can keep this gap where my fingers point in, if you can keep this gap 0.65 of a millimetre uh, or 0.75, depending on whether the wood is uh, harder or softer, it'll bite into the timber and it'll work well. If you grind the rakers down too much over a millimetre, Unless you've got a really powerful saw, a really powerful saw, and uh, yeah, I'd advise you not to do it. Just stick with 0.65 or 0.75 in softer timber. It's probably not worth going 0.9. Only experience, good experience, will would sort of allow a good user to go to, say, 0.9 in softer timber. So I hope that's not too confusing. I'll just try to recap. So try and make it a lot easier. It doesn't matter what saw you got. If you go more aggressive, you're going to need more horsepower. It's as simple as that. Especially if your wood's hard, you're going to need more horsepower. So if you've got a bigger saw and it's got a smaller bar on it, you can get away with a lot of different angles, more aggressive angles. But if you've got a saw like this, 72cc, and a 20-inch bar, you can afford to put a full chisel chain on it. You can change it to 35 degrees, uh, top plate angle, 0.75 on the rakers, and uh, it'll still cut medium to hard timber. But personally, if I was going to hard timber, I'd stick to standard. 60 degrees top plate angle, 30 degrees, oh sorry, 60 degrees top plate cutting angle and uh, 30 degrees top plate. So for those that may be getting a bit confused with the top plate and the uh, top plate cutting angle, here you can see the degrees from left to right, 0 to 35. So this is what we refer to the top plate. So that sets the top plate angle and that's the angle that you can see here. This angle here so that's our top plate by the way this is 30 degrees when we adjust the wheel here the grinder wheel at the back here we've got graduations from 90 degrees down to 40 so that's just a matter of loosening the bolt at the back and you can turn it to the different angles 60 degrees being fairly standard. At the moment, it's on 40 degrees. So you don't use it at 40. So if we just turn that and rotate that to 60 degrees, we 
we got 30 degrees here, 60 degrees on the top plate cutting angle. Now, on chainsaw grinders, you could refer to that as the head angle. So what the top plate, there's two top plate angles. So it gets a little, it may get a little bit confusing. When we talk about the top plate, that is just that angle there of the top plate. But the cutting angle is this angle here. So the wheel comes down at 60 degrees. So that's the top plate cutting angle, not to be confused with the horizontal angle. So you've got your, if you want to call it slightly off vertical angle, as, as horizontal angle. So just try to remember that. A lot of people, that is the correct name that you use. Top plate cutting angle, and that's just called top plate, and that's called side plate. So... The other angle that you can use on a full chisel chain is that when you've got an adjustable, all, all the electric grinders are adjustable like this. Some of them have tilting where you can tilt the vise backwards and forwards. Uh, it puts a, a compounded bevel on the tooth. What that actually means, that it slightly changes the geometry of this slightly. Uh, normally when you uh, put a 10 degree downward tilt, you will lose about two and a half degrees off this angle. I've measured that, that's confirmed. And it's a slightly different, the way that it grinds here is a slightly different angle, the 10 degree downward tilt. It's only recommended for full chisel chain. Okay, so I think that's about virtually it. There's not much else I can say. If you've got a little tiny baby chainsaw, let's say an MS-170 or an MS-180, yeah, look, I still run full chisel chains on those. I keep them razor sharp. They cut really well. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the semi-chisel, even though a lot of people use them, because I like my chains razor sharp. So sharp, they'll cut your skin uh, just by touching touching the edge of the uh, the tooth. They're that sharp. That's the way I like to grind them, the way I like to keep them. I can file them just as good, but I prefer the electric grinder because I do multiple chains. I could do a half a dozen, and I'm not going to get out there with a file and file half a dozen chains. Uh, a lot of people turn around and say that when you use a grinding wheel, uh, you know, it, it damages the metal. It can blue the metal. When you're using a grinder, it's you tap down on it. It's go tap, 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 very gentle. You don't just bring the grinding wheel down into the tooth. You'll overheat the tooth and then you'll change the temper and it'll become that hard that you'll hardly be able to file it. So that comes down to inexperienced people not knowing how to use one of these grinders. But believe me, these grinders are fantastic when you've got multiple chains to do and you've got to do them on a fairly regular basis. The last thing you want to do when you come home uh, from a day's cutting is spending another hour with a file where you could spend yeah, 20 minutes with one of these. Roughly do a, a chain about every six, seven minutes. So that's roughly what I can do them in. And they don't blue the metal. Uh, yeah. So just a final recap. Uh, small powered uh, chainsaws. Not a lot you can do with them. You can change maybe five degrees on the angle. So yeah, you can go 25 degrees, 30 degrees. Top plate angle, you could have 55 degrees like on here. You could run 55 degrees. You could run 65 degrees. It depends whether you, you're you wanting uh, the horsepower rating. Uh, that's what it all comes down to, cutting angles. It depends what wood you're cutting. So just remember that, that just because you think, oh, I'm going to put this really aggressive profile on my chain. That's fine if you've got the horsepower to pull it. And, and to keep the RPM up, the cutting speed. You want the cutting speed 100%. There is no point putting an aggressive profile on a saw and it's only got a cutting speed of about 60% because it's using more than 100% of its torque. Or you can't use more than 100%, but you're using maximum power and it's bogging down because it's too aggressive. You've got the rakers too low. You've got everything's just wrong for that type of uh, saw. So, yeah. That's probably it in a nutshell. Aggressive tooth geometry can only be achieved if you've got a powerful saw. If you've only got a little tiny saw, you don't have much room to play with. You have some, but not a lot. So the more powerful saw that you've got, 
the much more room that you've got to play with. But don't go out there trying to make the most aggressive profiles, thinking that you're going to cut through some piece of timber like a knife through uh, margarine. It ain't going to happen. Uh, the only way that's going to happen is if you've got really soft timber and it's fresh and you're going to cut through it pretty good with an aggressive uh, profile with a saw that's got a bit of uh, guts behind it. MS380 72cc saw, it's all right for firewood, but if you had an MS660, which is much, much more powerful, great saw to play around with all the profiles. Uh, as I said, I'm in Australia, we've got very hard wood, so you can't afford to have the most aggressive profiles out there. You live in a country, say like America, that have some soft ash. Some of the soft ash is only half as hard as the wood we got. You can play around with the profiles a lot better. So it's, it's horses for courses. So I hope that information helps a lot of people out there decide if they've been thinking about, oh, you know, I've got a grinder, it's got all these angles, what are they for? Stick to the manufacturer's recommendation and only go a couple of degrees, say five degrees either side of that if you've got soft timber and look at some of the other videos. I've got there's some more information in some of those that may be able to sort of help you. This is just uh, a bit of information that sort of like tells you that it's really horsepower that's going to do the job when you start to use aggressive profiles on your chain. And look, some of the professionals out there, when we talk about professionals, professional like tree loppers, they, want, they probably use powerful saws and they want fairly good aggressive profiles so they're cutting through the timber. Only one other point to remember is also is this. When we're talking about aggressive profiles and we're changing them, a lot of the times the edge, the sharpness of them, they can go, go dull a lot quicker. So that can be your other problem. So sometimes, you know, you've got the aggressive profile. Yes, it cuts quicker. It, you need the more powerful saw, but then it might not last as long. And that's why the most standard profile out there is what they say, 60, 30, 0. That means 60 degrees top plate cutting angle, 30 degrees top plate, that's a horizontal angle, and the 0, that there's no tilt on the table because it's not a... In other words, when you're saying 60, 30, 0, you'd be normally referring to a semi-chisel. So if you were referring to a full chisel, I'd say 60, 30, 10, 10 degrees forwards or 10 degrees uh, you know, backwards, positive or minus, whichever way you want to look at it. Look, I hope this video helps. Uh, hopefully that information sinks into a few people that uh, it's okay to have aggressive profiles. The trade-off is horsepower, also maybe sharpness. The chains don't last as long. It's something that you can play around with. If you're not happy with it, you can always go back to standard. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Please give us comments or the thumbs up. Bye for now.